Well, hey, y'all. It is such an honor to be here. I wish we could be meeting in person, but this is this is what we're we're doing. And I really hope that you are enjoying your time uh, at the Automation DevOps Conference. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. Well, let's start off. There was two fish in a tank. And one fish turns to the other and asks, hey, do you know how to drive this thing? It's a tank. Well, during these unprecedented times, there's so much disruption and confusion and noise. You might feel like you're trying to, you're a fish trying to drive a tank too. Well, I hope you and your family are doing well. I hope you are enjoying this opportunity to be a part of this, this summit. And I want to tell you, first of all, a disclaimer, I'm, I'm just a software developer. I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm not a certified guru. I'm not a thought leader. But like farmers insurance, I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. And I bet you have stories you could tell too. I'm here to share some of my experience. And my hope is there are some nuggets of value that you can take away and apply to your work, your career and life and and hopefully have some success with them. You know, learn from my mistakes or my <laughs> my you know what I've run into. So you may be feeling, as I am right now, talking to uh, you over this camera, uh, a little bit anxious, maybe a little bit overwhelmed. You know, there's like you've been learning all this new stuff uh, through this event and you're thinking, how am I going to how am I going to learn all this new stuff? How am I going to convince my boss to let me do any of these things? How, and, you know, I'm here to throw some more information at you. So what are we going to talk about? Well, I guess we could talk about the future of computing and is serverless, whatever that means. We could talk about IoT and machine learning, artificial intelligence, you know, very hot topics. I could try to convince you that you should be connecting everything in your house to the cloud and reaping all those benefits of that rich data um, or I could tell you about the latest JavaScript framework that was created just, you know, a few days ago that's now the new standard for the entire Internet, and you should get on board and forget everything that you thought you knew. <clears throat> no, what I want to do is I want to take a step back and not talk so much about technology, but I want to give you a bigger lens for you to see your world. I want you to walk away with a bigger and more clear perspective on your life. And I'm here to tell you that you are awesome. It's true. You may not realize it yet, but you have some pretty amazing tools that you were born with. Unfortunately, all of us have to deal with lies. As we get older, there are more and more lies that sneak into our heads from the people, the you know, lies that people have told us, lies that the world has told us, lies that we have told ourselves. Um, we compare ourselves to others and think we don't measure up. And that's a bunch of garbage. And I want you to stop listening to those lies. So allow me to speak some truth to you in the next 35, 40 minutes. I want you to repeat um, some of these next phrases in your head, if you can, because I want these things to sink in. Um, you're awesome. You are also smart. I mean, you're here at this event, right? I mean, you're you're smart. You're working on a pretty cool technology, and you can you can accomplish some incredible stuff. You are strong, in all the definitions of of that word. 
you are beautiful. Yes, even guys can be beautiful too. You can sing. At least, you know, you know, some of you can sing literally. Some of you, you know, might be better that you sing metaphorically you know, through the things that you create. You know, there's there's other ways to sing other than vocal cords. <laughs> um, you are loved. You're loved right now. You deserve to be loved, and you will be loved in the future. You are not a failure. Mistakes are a critical part of life, and mis- making mistakes doesn't mean that you're a failure. Behind every successful person is a burning trash heap of mistakes. I, yeah, I'm, I'm on a burning trash heap of mistakes myself. You are not broken. Whatever that thing that makes you different or weird or, or whatever, that makes you extraordinary. That makes you unique. You are wonderful. You matter to someone. You are valuable, far more than all the wealth in the world. You are never too far gone. Don't ever give up on yourself. You belong. You are amazing. And you are awesome. So, You are not defined by those lies. You are not defined by your past, your mistakes. You don't need to compare yourself to other folks. You are the most awesome person you've ever met. I think so. Years ago, I participated in a program called Men's Fraternity, and it's designed to help uh, men to understand what real authentic manhood is especially for those of us who didn't grow up in a with was such a good role model and it was the program was about how to be a better husband, a better father, a son, worker, friend, how to live with integrity, how to take responsibility, how to fight for the rights of others, especially those that that are, you know, don't have a voice for themselves. And the list goes on and on. One of the things that came up in the study that I believe that applies to everyone is our legacy. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? What what do you want written on your tombstone? I, I know that's kind of a morbid thought, and it may be a little bit uncomfortable to think about, but have you ever taken the time to really think about it? You know, how you want your your the, the value and your the traje- trajectory of your life. Another way to look at it is living with the end in mind. What what do you want to be remembered for? Living with the end in mind can shape your focus and your priorities and your values and help you to figure out what what is the most important thing. What's what's most important to you? And you were born with an insatiable desire to learn and to explore. You have the capacity to achieve far more than you can imagine. You're never too young or too old to learn something new. And things like creativity and imagination are like a muscle. They're, the more you use them, the more powerful the ba- they become. And you have these things. You have these tools. You you might need to blow the dust off of them and start exercising them again. In 2015, I discovered I had a passion for drawing. I started out drawing crude stick figures and shapes and arrows. and I, I was trying to figure out ways to make my presentations more interesting, and it worked. It was fun, and people began encouraging me to do more. And a few years ago, I drew this guy for one of my talks, and some of you may recognize him as the ShamWow meme guy. And I was I was really proud of this drawing. I, it took me a long time to create it. And it got, you know, every time it came up in one of my talks, you know, I would get a few chuckles. Well, recently I was going through and updating some of my, my slides and I thought, well, you know, maybe I could do 
I've been drawing for a while now. Maybe I can do a little bit better. And so I drew the same guy again, and I thought, wow, I I really have gotten better. I can't believe how far I've come. I've, and I'm not telling you this to brag. I I am truly amazed that I can do these things, and I'm continuing to get better at them. I want to encourage you that, you know, folks tell me you you are so gifted, and I I say no, that's that's not it. the The gift, if there is a gift, is that spark that is inside you, that desire to learn, to dream, to to envision a better version of yourself. The gift is every day that you're given. The rest is the time and the effort that you're willing to put into following your dream. I believe without a doubt that whatever it is that you want to do, you can do it. And the formula for doing amazing things is pretty simple. It's accomplishing whatever you want to do. It's been proven over and over that natural talent uh, will only get you so far. It's okay to make mistakes. That's how you learn. Edison, who invented the light bulb, said, I have not failed. I have found 10,000 ways that won't work. And sometimes it's hard to see your progress. But over time, you'll start to realize just how far you've come. And this applies to learning a new programming language, learning a musical instrument, learning to speak a new language, learning, you know, some kind of art or craft or whatever it is that you want to geek out about. Give yourself the the freedom to fail so that you can learn and and keep doing it. Keep practicing and, and be patient with yourself. We love stories about heroes. There's something about these hero stories that resonate in us. And oftentimes the hero doesn't realize who who they are, what they're capable of until someone or something comes along that, you know, acts as a catalyst that transforms their their viewpoint or, you know, their circumstances that that they become the hero. I believe that you are the hero in your story, that you are capable of more than you realize. You can do bigger and more incredible things than you've yet to imagine. You are awesome. And I want to encourage you to maximize your strengths and find those things that you're passionate about and and grow But there's more to your story than just being really good at some things or being really awesome at at specific uh, skills or, you know, all all those kinds of (laughs) things that can bring you a lot of joy. There's, There's more to it than that. You also have a purpose. It's not enough just to be awesome. You were created to share your awesomeness with other people. And I believe that our purpose in life can be summed up basically, you know, kind of like the the Boy Scout rule, you know, leave it better than you found it. Not just the planet, but every relationship, every, every encounter, your workplace, your family, your friends, random people that you meet as you go about life, every opportunity, every situation, you have the opportunity to leave it better than you found it. People are watching you all the time. They notice how you react to situations, how you treat other people, your character, your how you take responsibility or not, or how you keep your word or not, or how you forgive others or not. Did you know that different people have different personalities? It, it's true. I mean, different people have different behaviors and have different ways of seeing the world. 
how they process information, how they make decisions, and how they respond to conflict. Our The tech industry attracts a lot of people with, let's say, suboptimal people skills. Not, not everyone, but gosh, it sure seems like it's a pretty predictable, you know, rule of thumb. So I'm one of those, you know, I, I, for, for most of my career, I was really productive and got really far in my career just on my technical skills alone. And most of us, including me, are more comfortable talking to our computers than navigating the unpredictable, irrational, emotional waters of human interaction, right? But like it or not, we are relational beings. We are designed to live in community. And one of the most valuable opportunities you have available is your community. It's the place where you can not only learn and grow and be challenged to do new things, I challenge you to get involved and find ways that you can give back. It's a there are so many ways that you can contribute to your community. There are incredible things happen when you get involved in your community. You make new connections, new friendships, exciting opportunities that you may never have ever dreamed of. I you know, <laughs> I could spend the rest of the this talk just telling you about all the amazing things that have happened to me uh, through connections that I've made at events and being involved in the tech community and ways that I've given back that's, you know, paid in dividends. One of the biggest myths I see is people believe that they have to be experts before they can contribute back to their community. And that's just not true. You don't have to be an expert. I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing some things that I've learned. In fact, you have something that no one else in the entire planet has. You have your experience. People can and will argue about semantics and best practices and technology and whatever all day long, but they can't argue with your experience. I challenge you to share your experience and your knowledge with others. Have you heard of the Dilbert Principle? The most uh, the Dilbert Principle is is uh, the most ineffective workers are systematically moved to the place where they can do the least amount of damage, which is management. Um, <laughs> well, early in my career, I worked under a manager who exemplified this Dilbert Principle. I really didn't like him personally or professionally, and his his incompetence was legendary. He was notoriously bad. Mistakes were named after him, and yet he still continued to rise in rank and responsibility. And a lot of the work I was required to do under his direction was of no value to anyone. You know, have you been there? <laughs> For example, I was asked to create a huge binder of documentation for every method and every stored procedure and the code that my team was writing, and no one was going to read this ever. <clears throat> Meaningless and pointless work is soul-crushing. I toughed it out for more than a year. I tried to find ways to get out from under him, but with no hope of relief in sight, I found another job. And I said to myself, life is too short to work somewhere that stinks. I, and I started living by this philosophy. I offered it as advice to many others when I heard them complaining about their jobs. Like, just find another job. Just, you know, you don't need that. Go. Well, in technology, we are very privileged that we're in such high demand and have the, we have the luxury of being able to choose where we work and you know, that isn't the case in every profession. The problem is that line of thinking began to pollute my perspective. And when things started to go sour, I would think, oh, great, here we go again. Time to start looking for a new job. Years later, I was in a similar situation. I was unhappy, 
I started interviewing at other companies, and I had a very attractive job offer on the table, and I was trying to decide if I should accept. And that's when my wife asked me two questions that stopped me in my tracks. She asked me, have you done everything that you can do? And if you left right now, would you have any regrets? Who, man, I declined the job offer. I took ownership of the situation. I committed to doing everything I, in my power to make my team successful. In the end, I left that job, but I left one year later with no regrets and extremely proud of the work that we'd accomplished. It had been one of the most productive and prolific years of my career. Now, sure, there can be toxic environments, career-limiting situations, and amazing opportunities that come along where changing jobs is justified. But for anything else, I've got a new mindset. Life is too short to let things stay the way they are. I've learned that taking ownership and responsibility is always the right thing to do, and it has far-reaching effects. As Martin Luther King would say, it's, it's always the right time to do the right thing. Every now and again, we, you know, speaking of job opportunities and, and whatnot, is we have to say goodbye to, to some to people, you know, sometimes really, really good ones. And regardless of the circumstances, we let them know how much they're going to be missed. And sometimes we, you know, even throw a party and tell stories about the awesome things that they'll be remembered for. And like, hey, remember that time when you, you laughed so hard and milk shot out your nose? I'm going to really miss you shooting milk out of your nose. Well, I decided um, to... You know, I got to thinking about the people that we work with. You know, why do we have to wait until someone is leaving to let them know how awesome they are? So I try, I decided to, to run an experiment. And in this example, Nakoda was one of our, our customer support manager. And as someone described, he, he did the work of 10,000 men. Nakoda consistently went above and beyond to make customers happy. And he is awesome. Now, the drawing is, isn't important. It's just something fun I like to do. And what I said about each person usually wasn't all that earth-shattering e either. So I would do this every Friday. I would pick someone and I would, I would draw them and, and write something about them. But the real magic, the real magic was what everyone else said throughout the day. Story after story, encouragement, high fives. It was absolutely beautiful. And all I did was start the conversation. This experiment lasted for about a year, and I had so many people thank me and tell me how special it was to be honored, recognized, and celebrated by their peers. You see, every one of us wants to know that the things we do matter that our work has value and significance, that, that we have value. And, and encouragement highlights a person's strengths and its positive reinforcement. You know, if you encourage someone, what does that person want to do? Well, they want to do more of the awesome things that they're recognized for. They want to keep feeling that feeling of, you know, making a difference and having value. So I've come to the conclusion over the years of software development and agile project management and all these other things that um, you know one of the fundament one of the principles of agile management is res and a lean manufacturing lean stuff is respect for people. I I've come to the conclusion that respect for people is the most fundamental principle. Respect requires a company to remain true to the goal 
of a sustainable workplace where its employees can thrive. Respect demands that you listen, that you have empathy, that you, you know, your mutual respect respect brings people together to fight for each other's success. Uh, respect demands that you promote healthy workplaces and well-being, uh, commitment to reduce friction and wasteful activities. Respect is what enables you to be successful at all the other things. If you know me, if you don't know me, um, I can't go very long without talking about bacon. I, I like bacon. It's it's a fact. So I submit to you the highest award for excellence in my mind. So when you encourage someone or a group of people or a team of people, they will continue to improve and create amazing results. And the cool thing is they can go on to inspire others to do cooler and more awesome things and they start to encourage more people and it has it can have you know this chain effect that if you are the person that's kind of setting the example of what it means to be an encourager you know you never know what kind of of downstream effects that that could have on someone else okay full transparency I grew up in a family where there wasn't a whole lot of encouragement being shared. And so encouragement for me doesn't come natural. It's a skill that I've had to learn, just like learning to <laughs> learning to use SQL, which is not even the same thing at all. But I maybe you get my point. Okay. Encouragement. Let let me give you some examples and maybe you can learn. Uh, to be a better encourager, too. Imagine you have a coworker named Mary. You can go up to Mary and say, Mary, I want you to know how much I appreciate all the database work that you do for our team. Not only that, but you are always smiling and being cheerful. You are such an encouragement to me and everyone around you. Thank you. Paul. Thank you for always being willing to help. I know I can always count on you to help me when I'm stuck. I can talk to you about a problem, and you have great solutions, and it means a lot to me. You are awesome. Mark, um, thank you for always wearing deodorant and getting on Zoom fully dressed. i Good work. Keep it up. See, it's it's not that hard. You can learn <laughs> to be an encourager, too. If there's someone you know who has impacted you in some way recently or in the past, let them know about it. Don't wait until it's too late. Okay, I have one more story that I want to give you. And this, this is a, a very personal story. Let me take you back to 1982, specifically Thanksgiving 1982. We're, we're coming up on Thanksgiving pretty soon. And um, in as was the custom in my family at that time, we would get together at my aunt and uncle's house in uh, near Atlanta, Georgia, and that fateful Thanksgiving 1982, I discovered one of these. Um, this was my, my cousin's uh, computer, and it was a TRS-80. And I don't know if I spent, you know, most of the time during Thanksgiving at this computer, but I, I know... It made an impression on me and me, you know, the things that I was doing on it made an impression on my uncle. And sometime after Thanksgiving, my mom got a phone call and we drove down to um, Atlanta 
And waiting for me was a big cardboard box. And inside was this TRS-80, a cassette drive, a floppy drive, a dot matrix printer, a whole bunch of cables, and this book. This one kind and very generous act launched me on a journey of computers and programming and a love for technology. And even the illustrations in this book must have made an impact on me because I'm now doing the same kind of silly stuff today. I can't thank my aunt and uncle enough for the impact that they've made on my life and my career, my livelihood. I continue to be inspired by their example of investing not only in their own family, but in the lives of countless other people. And I've come to realize that we all have opportunities. You have an amazing opportunity to impact your family, your relatives, your community, your workplace. You never know if some act of kindness, a word of encouragement, a small investment of your time, sharing your experiences could be the catalyst that launches someone on their lifelong journey of exploration and joy and possibly their their livelihood. So when you virtually exit this event today, you have a choice. You can continue to learn and grow. And I want you to, to share what you're learning and your your awesomeness with others. Your adventure, no matter how old you are today, your adventure is just beginning. So this is my challenge to you. Regardless of your age, the amount of experience, your job title, you have amazing potential to impact your workplace and your family, the community, and beyond in significant, positive, and meaningful ways. Go maximize your talents. Go be courageous and inspire others. Go and be awesome. Thank you. I got done early, so... (laughs) I didn't realize. Usually, I'm I'm really pressed for time, so maybe I blew through some of that some of that stuff a little too quickly. Um, so, if you do, I, I now have the chat up. If you have some questions, uh, here's one. Yeah, men's fraternity. That's the name of it. Well, thank thank all of y'all too. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, to be with y'all today. I hope this has been encouraging to you. And you know, it's like I said, get get out there and be awesome. Uh, whatever you're learning today, uh, I hope you can you can take those things and apply them and and do some amazing stuff.